Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to follow up that video that's playing just above me there on the subject of hard drive shucking. After I made that video I was doing some research just knocking around really making some recommendations just following up mostly on all the other comments that came below that video on the most you know the best drives to shuck recommended shucking practices and ultimately where does someone go to find out the best hard drives worth shucking and what drives are inside usbs and then i realized while going through all of that information there isn't really any single place where you can get a master list or any kind of big directory of drives that are inside usb enclosures obviously there are lots of reasons for that that will go throughout this video but in today's video, I want to show you the four ways that I would strongly recommend to find out the contents of the drive inside a USB enclosure, either before you buy or before you get your little screwdriver out there. But before we go any further, I will highlight that. Not only have I made an article previously talking about the subject of shucking, the good and the bad, but just in time for this video, and again, this was the motivation for this video, I went ahead and started creating a master list of different external enclosures from WD, Seagate, and I've just started on Toshiba's Canvio and other uh, backup drives there, and the drives that are inside them. And this video is gonna show you how I put that list together and how I'm going to continue adding towards that list. But, quick disclaimer, this is linked below. So if that's all you've come for, the link to the master list, this will be linked below. But this video is gonna show you how I put that list together, the sources for that information, and how to find out the USB uh, drives moving forward. Hold up, before we go any further, a very important warning. And I mentioned this in the other video, and I debated whether it needed to be mentioned again, but I will state it again. This is that a lot of Drives that are inside the external enclosures can often have bridging boards in place. These bridging boards can sometimes either be slotted on on top of the SATA connection that means that the original drive will require further tinkering in order to get to the original SATA connection on the hard drive or SSD. Or in some cases, the drive will have that bridge board soldered onto the drive with the SATA completely removed. And this is another movement by the brands to stop users shucking drives. So do bear in mind that although I am gonna mention a lot of methods today in which you can identify the drive that's inside an enclosure, it does not guarantee that it will not have an adapter put on and this can be the one single range of drives where some of them have got a bridge board from usb to sata and some of them don't there is no real methodology and in a few of my entries do take note of the date of some of the methods that you're going to use to identify the drive that's inside an enclosure because if it's not particularly recent that might add more doubt to the fact there may be a bridge there on the top but let's go ahead with method one Now, method number one might surprise you uh, because manufacturers, again, we're going to focus a lot on WD and Seagate here, generally do not make a point of highlighting the drive that's inside their external enclosures there. One, because they know it can often be cheaper to shuck a drive than it is to get a, a bare drive, a bare internal drive from their own websites or even from Amazon like here, but also because it allows them to chop and change the drive that's inside their enclosures as long as it stays within the remit and performance and durability and more on the price point of their enclosures however you know amazon here the biggest detailer you know in the world if you go ahead for example and put in wd atb usb you'll be listed with a bunch of different drives there well done sponsored posting uh, now if we're going to look at this one here this wt uh, wd atb elements drive now nowhere on this page does the official manufacturer or amazon themselves detail which drive is inside this enclosure However, there's actually two different ways on a page like this we can find out the drive that's inside. And the majority of it comes down to these, the reviews and the questions. And the reason being that USB drives are still, even in this data-aware, cloud-centric age, incredibly popular as a form of additional backup layer or as traditional storage for portability. And if you scroll down to the majority of USB drives and head into the photo section, it doesn't take very long just scrolling through those photos before you find one of two things. The first thing you might find is someone that has gone ahead 
and shucked the drive already. And then immediately you can find out what drive is inside there. Not only have you not had to spend a penny, but you haven't even had to use your own screwdriver. On top of that, there may be entries in that gallery where they've done performance measurements, performance benchmarks using software, that, and more on that later, that will show the drive that's inside. But you may have noticed we've already got a different drive inside there compared with some of the other results and this has to be where we have to highlight one of the inherent difficulties this method has and that is that the way that amazon consolidates all of its reviews be it for review images or overall reviews for similar products for the record amazon none of us like that no one wants that no one wants reviews for the wrong product however that's the way it is so if you do see uh, a photo like this one where someone has shucked to drive out of it, make a point of clicking on the reviewer's name and heading to get the full review. The reason being, it will then show you the precise review product that this was written for on the entry they went for. So it allows you to circumnavigate this grouping mechanic that Amazon takes towards its reviews. But that's half of the way to use Amazon to find out the drive that's inside. The secondary method is to go ahead to the questions section. In the questions section where people are asking loads and loads of questions, go into the search box and you can use one of I hate seagulls, many different kinds of search term. I mentioned this a lot in my article here some of the methodology you can use some of the keywords that are used for quite a great deal of success there these can range from going for just the word drive or shuck drive inside internal model search for terms like that or even better and this particularly works well with wd write half a model id so the majority of drives used inside their own um uh, uh, USB external drives use the moniker of WD and then a number representing the t uh, capacity. So one zero is one terabyte, two zero, two terabyte, 100 is 10 terabyte. So in this case, if I look up WD80, we can see that two people have already highlighted and they're dated drives that are inside this. But once again, go ahead and make sure that you click on the username to find out more about the specific item that they reviewed there. But ultimately, these two methods will allow you to look at the majority of external drives on Amazon and find out the drive that's inside before you spend as much as a penny. Next up, there is nothing quite like when a community bands together to help each other out. And although sometimes it does come under criticism, the website Reddit, it has to be said, is an absolute gold mine for identifying the models of drives inside the external enclosures there. And I will say more than anywhere else, the data hoarder um, on Reddit there is absolutely spot on. Notwithstanding that you can search within that Reddit to find out more information about chuckable drives, but even the majority of Googles that you can perform will go ahead and immediately lead one way or another to the data hoarder Reddit there. And the, no the sheer scale and the number of drives that have been identified on this website, either by users themselves that have gone out of their way to unpack drives and show people what's inside, or they've gone ahead, and, uh, gone ahead and kept records of individual series of enclosures and the drive that's encased inside them is genuinely insurmountable. And what if there was a way that we could consolidate all of that information into a Google Sheet, something I've not found, but if it is in there, someone please correct me and we'll put a link below to it. I've got to say, when it comes to identifying drives of even particularly old drives that you may see knocking around on eBay and the like, and you just want to make sure of whether that drive inside is much cop, I strongly recommend either directly searching within the data hoarder community or to go ahead with a Google, but do not be surprised, even if you don't put Reddit or data hoarder, that that will almost certainly be one of the highest results there. Now, this next point is kind of on a slightly moral gray area, depending on which e-retailer you choose to use it with. And it really is up to you, and you're that desperate if you want to shuck, whether to proceed with this. But what I will say is, if you cannot find the drive that's inside an enclosure anywhere online, at your Reddit, your data hoarders, any reviews or anything like that, even on the Amazon pages, one thing you can try is utilize the software Crystal Disk Info to scan a drive once it's connected to your system. So 
If, for example, and I've got a drive here, this is the Armour ATD uh, from GTEC there. If we go ahead and just search that online, clearly I already have, and we'll find that drive there. It's the 1TB down here. Even though it's had 2,000 reviews, it's not eminently clear which drive is inside that enclosure there. And if I can't find it online, if I went ahead and purchased this from Amazon, I've got uh, my um, period of time that I can return the drive to them. But of course, the minute I take a drive like this and then start playing around with my screwdriver, removing the hardened casing in this well-protected drive, that's going to break invisible seals. It may show in the logs once it's connected that I'm utilizing in a non-warranty supported way, and it will invalidate any of that warranty support or return policy legally I have with the retailer there however if you purchase the drive and connect it to your system then run crystal disk there which i've done i've connected the drive and i open up crystal disk i've connected it already so i'll rescan my connected drives there you'll see a third drive appear on my range of drives here and as you can see it's now telling me inside here that this drive has that specific model ID inside it. So I can go ahead, I can right click, and we can ignore down there that notification. So we can go ahead, we can copy that, open up a new tab, not save it there. We can open up a new tab here, go ahead, copy it in, and boom, we've now found out that the drive inside there is this one, the WT, WD2TB modded white label drive there it's that straightforward and crystal disk in most cases if you go ahead and download it it's linked in the description will identify the drive inside the only ones it won't identify in some time in cases is ssds a lot of the time as the ssd inside a lot of these enclosures more on this one later um are actual uh, built around that enclosure. They have no additional casing for the SSD there inside. And in a lot of cases, when it comes to the hard drives, uh, when it comes to T two TB and above, we're seeing more and more custom. Uh, drives being developed by manufacturers that are specifically OEM for systems or designed for external enclosure. But once again, if you're going to pursue this method for the drive that's inside an enclosure for shucking, please don't aim at small businesses for that sort of thing. Because although return policies are pretty much a legal right on new goods and you have somewhere between 14 and 30 days and you will have to pay the return shipping, that is still going to bite into their profit margin. So if you're going to use a method like this to a identify a drive before you shuck do you know don't aim at small businesses because it's just wrong i know generally the whole thing's a gray area anyway but if you really must go down this road do factor that into the e-shop that you're going to choose to purchase from Now, this last one, you almost certainly already know, but I think we should dig a little bit deeper into it because there are elements to it people don't realize. But the majority of external drive reviews you find online, the ones that are, you know, quite decent, the ones that go the extra mile, will almost certainly either show the drive information with a crystal disk shot on screen or use crystal disk benchmark at the very least. Or a lot of them will shuck the drive there in front of you. You can search for the term shucking if you choose. Or just go ahead, if you will, to just look up reviews. And more often than not, you will find someone who will have shucked a drive already for you to find out more about the content. And you can dig that down into individual reviews again. Or just go straight ahead and include the word shuck in the title. YouTube is smart enough to find that inside. Um, alternatively, if you go to dedicated storage media review website, and this is one that I highlighted in that previous previous video um sandisk here this is their extreme pro 1tb i've recommended this several times to different seasonal events it is one of my favorite external drives for on the fly backing up um this drive inside here this is a usb 3.2 gen 2 drive so a thousand megs external but if you dig into their review they make a point of highlighting that inside there is a wd SN750, a 3,100 megabytes per second SSD inside this case. And they open it up and they show it to you. And of course, that is connected via a standard M2. A lot of review sites, particularly SSD review, but not just them, go the extra mile in showing you the drive that's inside these enclosures. And it's just another way in which you can find out the drive that's inside an external enclosure long before you get the screwdriver out or even your credit card there. And once again, going back to the introduction to this video, this is why I'm still working on right now the shucked drives list, where I'm going through all of these different sites, all of these different methods to add 
more and more drives and within here you will find the original drive you will find the model id of that very important because newer revisions will modify the id it will say the current price as of uh, or at the moment 14 of the fourth depending on the popularity of this video um, ed may work on a tool for the channel here that will make this a little bit more automated for more drives to be added as well as give you the ability to add drives too and we're also detailing that drive that's inside there now on my side i've kept notes of uh, which record has got that drive noted inside along with the date on there we tried to add it into the page it got really really slow trying to load up all of the hyperlinks there um, but we will try to add that to a Google coverage doc like I think Ed's working on with a hard drive and RAM mega thread over for Synology stuff there which will be a Google entry form um, and of course there are links to the buy pages there for those it helps us support and keep making content there so of course we're going to include those but let me end by saying although WD is on there Seagate is on there and I've just started working on the Toshiba drives and I will start adding some of the SanDisk ones too and GTEC as well remember just because it's on this list and just because it identifies that drive that's inside there one that information may be out of date by the time you're watching this two it may have that modified adapter there on the end of the drive and therefore it will require additional soldering or additional removal of a usb or thunderbolt to sata bridging boards there in the middle so don't just assume if it's on the list that it means it is up for grab straight away but this has been an update to that shucking video and again head below to find the link to the shucking master list there in the description thank you so much for watching i'm probably going to ease off this subject for a while unless there's something you think you guys think i've missed and apart from that thank you so much for watching have yourselves a fantastic week i hate seagulls now click like click subscribe use the free advice section as well over on nas compares that's that big old blue button on the right hand side of the screen or the community support forum as well but apart from that i will see you next time